SEO Space is a premium plugin designed to boost your SEO on Squarespace. We've been using it on and off for a couple of years, but recently we've been baking it into our entire workshop process, whether we're building websites for clients or coaching our community. In this tutorial, I'll be having a conversation with Google AI Studio to fill in any knowledge gaps and provide more depth. This tool is new, and honestly, I think it's ideal if you need a tutor to walk you through a new software platform. Traditional tutorials where you sit and watch someone click through a screen might be a thing of the past in the next year or two because of this. That said, I'm not sure I'll ever fully get used to having a conversation with a bot. In this orientation, we'll break down the pros and cons, see where it fits best for your needs, and even consider whether the free version might be enough to get started. First up, let's take a look at pricing and what you actually get for your money. Let's crack on. Give me a breakdown of this website. Sure, this website is called SEO Space. It appears to be a Squarespace SEO plugin and tool provider. Their homepage highlights that they are an all-in-one Squarespace SEO plugin and tools and claim that Squarespace sites using SEO space are 4x more likely to be found on Google. There are buttons to install plugin and view pricing. There's a section that says rated 4.9 stars on Google. Sure, I'll just add my own uh, two cents into this. SEO Space is the premium plugin to boost your SEO on Squarespace. That's quite clear in the message here. We've been using it on and off for the last couple of years, but we're actually baking this into our entire workshop process when we build websites for our clients and also when we coach it through our coaching community. But I just want for us to discuss some of the pros and cons, where it might be suitable for you and where we may want to go with the free version, for example, to start with. So let's start off by having a look at the pricing, shall we? On the pricing page, could you just give me a breakdown of the differences between them and things we need to look out for? Certainly, there are three pricing plans available. The free plan has limited access for those just starting. The DIY plan is $9.99 a month and includes essential tools for small businesses. The pro plan is $24.99 a month and is best for pros with multiple websites. Finally, the agency plan is $69.99 a month and is ideal for teams managing multiple websites. All of the plans offer a seven-day free trial, but only the DIY, pro, and agency plans allow users to scan live Squarespace web pages and have access to Squarespace SEO community and tutorials. Scan live Squarespace web pages means the tool can analyze active websites built with Squarespace. With the free plan, you cannot perform this analysis, but with the DIY, pro, and agency plans, the SEO tool can analyze live Squarespace websites to identify areas for improvement and offer optimization suggestions. How does that differentiate from the automatic site audit? Automatic site audit feature refers to the plugin's ability to automatically analyze a website's technical SEO aspects. The free plan doesn't include the automatic site audit feature. On the DIY plan, this audit covers up to 100 pages. The pro plan covers up to 500 pages. And with the agency plan, it covers an unlimited number of pages. Would you like me to further elaborate on any of those features? Yeah, sure. You've kind of just stated what's on screen. I want you to do a little bit more digging behind the scenes. Why would someone want automatic site audit? What are the benefits? And yeah, give me an example where someone may not need it, at least to get started. Of course. The automatic site audit feature provides a comprehensive analysis of your website's SEO, looking for areas like page speed, mobile friendliness, and broken links. This feature is valuable to those who want a deeper technical insight. For example, someone just starting out with a personal blog and has no real interest in any technical SEO aspects might not need it. However, a small business that is looking to rank well on Google and increase their visibility online would likely find that the automatic site audit is helpful. Let's move on then to the scheduled reports and monitoring. So we can see the free one doesn't have this feature at all, which again, going back to beginners who are just starting out, that makes a lot of sense. But then when we've got the DIY pro and agency option, there's an option for schedule monthly reporting, also weekly reporting with agency. Give me some examples of where this could be really useful, either for yourself or if you are an agency and you're looking to provide SEO as a service to your clients, why this could help you and your business. Sure, let's talk about scheduled reports and monitoring. The free plan does not offer this service, but it's included in the DIY, pro, and agency plans. With the DIY and pro plans, reports are generated monthly while the agency plan offers weekly reports. Would you like to know the differences between the monthly and weekly reports? Or would you like to discuss another feature? Not so much. I think that's pretty clear, the difference between monthly and weekly. Can you do a bit of digging to find out what type of information would be in these reports with SEO Space? Okay, I will focus on the type of information that would be in the reports. Based on the information I see on the screen, 
the reports and monitoring would likely cover AI recommendations, blog post suggestions, keyword research, and competitor analysis. Break down keyword research. Why is this important for SEO? And why is this tool essential if you're looking to really grow your traffic on your Squarespace site? Okay, let's break down keyword research. It is important for SEO because it helps you understand what terms people use when searching for information related to your website. Using this tool, you can optimize your content to attract more organic traffic to your Squarespace site. Okay, just adding to that, uh, organic traffic is traffic that comes naturally through Google to your website, which is different to paid traffic via pay-per-click or Google ads or even social media ads, etc. So you can drive organic traffic from social media. You can drive it from Google and other search engines directly. This is what we're talking about with SEO. We're trying to increase our organic traffic. Um, do you think that covers it or do you've got anything else to add to that? I understand. So just adding to that, Organic traffic is traffic that comes naturally through Google or other search engines. It is different from paid traffic, such as pay-per-click or Google ads, social media ads, etc. So you can drive organic traffic from social media, you can drive it from Google and other search engines directly. With SEO, we are trying to increase our organic traffic. Does that cover what you were after or would you like me to add to that? No, I think you pretty much covered what I said, so we're in agreement on that one. Okay, what's blog post suggestions? Give me a bit of background in terms of what that feature is. Don't worry about how many credits or anything like that because that's already covered on screen. All right, I can certainly provide some background on the blog post suggestions feature. The blog post suggestion feature is meant to provide you with ideas for content to put on your website. It is designed to be a tool that aids in brainstorming blog post topics that will help with your SEO. The blog post suggestion feature uses AI to analyze your website and industry to suggest relevant blog post topics. The suggestions are based on keywords and topics that are likely to attract organic traffic to your website. This can save you a lot of time and effort in coming up with new ideas and also can be used to identify gaps in your existing blog. Would you like to know more about this tool or move on to something else? Now we're gonna move on to keyword research now. We've covered this already, but I just want to, to go into more detail in explaining what keyword research is, why it's so important. Don't worry about the number of searches available because the information is already displayed. Keyword research, in my opinion, is one of the building blocks and the foundations for getting started with SEO. It's adding a strategic layer. So when I'm uh, coaching clients on getting their website live and then starting to add blog posts, I start by mentioning to them that we want to get consistency and content out there first, not worrying too much about keyword research. But this is the next stage that we add in, which boosts the presence because we can become more strategic at the stage once we've learned the basics and are disciplined in creating content regularly, which Google responds really well to. So can you just elaborate a little bit more, please? Keyword research is the cornerstone of any successful SEO strategy. By understanding what terms and phrases people are using to find information, you can optimize content so search engines can find it more easily. This in turn allows people that want to find your content to actually do it. We're just going to briefly have a look at competitor analysis. So this is where we would look at one of our competitors or several competitors. So we got the option for 10 or 100 searches or even 300 searches based on the price table. What I'd like you to do is to go into a little bit more detail in terms of why competitor analysis is used in SEO and when it can be important for you. Understood. So competitor analysis in SEO is important because it allows you to understand what strategies your competitors are using, what keywords they are targeting, and what content they are creating. This allows you to identify gaps and opportunities to create your own content. So when you are conducting competitor analysis, you can start by identifying your main competitors and then examine things such as their backlink profile to see where they're getting their links from. You can also analyze their on-page SEO, which includes looking at their title tags, meta descriptions, and header tags. Now let's move on to keyword tracking. Now we can see it's not a feature currently in SEO space at the time of recording this, but coming soon sounds good. Looks like it's only coming to the agency plan, which makes sense because the data needed to constantly track keyword rankings is quite a lot. And so I just want to break down in terms of when someone's become more established with SEO, explain how keyword tracking allows you to take you to the next stage. And also give me some examples of other third-party free and paid keyword trackers that people could use. I use Ubersuggest and I paid a one-time fee for that, for my keyword tracking. I can elaborate on that. Keyword tracking is a practice that lets you monitor your website's search engine ranking for specific keywords over time. And it is a crucial part of SEO strategy because it helps you measure the success of your SEO efforts, identify new opportunities, and refine your strategy accordingly. If you are desperate for this type of feature, I can recommend Ubersuggest. Not so keen on the name, but the tool is really handy and it's something I've been using for years. It's going to be great because I'm going to instantly sign up to the agency plan when this becomes available in SEO space. 
because I can have everything in one place then to track the performance of my websites. But you've got a full breakdown then of researching keywords, competitor analysis in this app as well. And there are different tiers depending on where you want to go. So you've also got a domain overview. Up until this point, I've been using SEO space alongside Ubersuggest, but I'm really looking forward to the fact that I can bring it all into one dedicated SEO platform that specializes in Squarespace. If you're interested in signing up, check out our link. We have an affiliate partnership with SEO space. So full disclosure, we take a very small cut of what you will pay for one of the paid subscriptions, but ultimately have a look at this price table for yourself. Of course, you can use Google AI Studio and use the screen share tool yourself so that you can ask your own questions. So if there's something I've not quite covered in this orientation, by all means, use it. It's a tool that I'm going to be using for future tutorials and uh, hope you found this helpful. Otherwise, I'll be coming back with another tutorial showing how we can install and set up this plugin on one of our Squarespace sites. Catch you in a bit. Thank <laughs> you.